and good morning. I have a brilliant friend who wishes for me to share this information far and wide. Two people who are like-minded and applying themselves in studying. He says, howdy, are you getting anywhere with them? The proverbial kind. I expected a response from you. I expected a negative response. Most people cannot deal with the information I tell them. Some like to pick out what they choose to believe, which is the lack of knowledge, usually because of some of the influence prior to me causes them to realize that certain thing. But they'll try to throw out the rest of it as if it doesn't exist. Here's a simple way to see equity versus their bullshit offering of laws. You want them to show cause on something? In other words, you want a production of evidence as a challenge against something they have got, codes or regulations, etc., in support of their specified thing as being prima facie evidence. They provide a variety of codes, rules, regulations, procedures, and processes, et all, ad nusum, A-D-N-A-S-E-M-U-M, for their licensed users, mostly attorneys, but some people believe, again, the lack of knowledge, they can use them too. To use to obtain the things they need in challenging adverse parties. Or you could choose to point out, without mentioning any of their encoded crap, the necessity of having actual physical possession of a thing in order to show one has it, so to speak. This kind of challenge is uh, prevalent in a banking foreclosure suits and or actions they the banks never bring in the actual note they are claiming another owes them for without the note how does the bank claim they are injured by it not being paid back to them maxims he who sells his interest cannot thereby come back and claim one he who sells his interest has none The creditor that sells his interest is thereby barred from claiming one. And many more support that. Getting back to evidence of the fact, side of making claims since the contract makes the law another maximum, what doesn't appear doesn't exist. This is not a defect in law. It's a wanting of facts that support every single multiple and beyond attempt to get anything into court in support of whatever they are doing. The first part of that uh, suffices. The last part is an expanded version similar to other maxims. I've always gotten a big kick out of writing up one-page appeals, one-page habeas corpuses, and whatnot, using nothing more than a chain of maxims of law or maxims, law, as sentences shown in support of a few statements, facts, used to get there. The guy I wrote up the stuff for was thrown in the pokey for not appearing while trying to get their judge in this state, they are not even judges as defined under their statute, at the bottom of their evidentiary rules, chapter, offer, a chapter of offered encoded crap, HTTPS, full colon, forward slash, forward slash, nebraskalegislator.gov, forward slash, laws, forward slash, statutes, period, PHP, question mark, statute, equal sign, 27-1101. Just in case you're not hearing what I'm saying about these people picking and choosing to do what they want, at any rate, pay particular attention to the way these crafty mother effers word their crap to wit. Rules 1101, uh, applicability of rules, courts, proceedings, generally. Rules inapplicable, grand jury, uh, miscellaneous proceedings, rules applicable in part. 
Number one, the Nebraska evidence rules apply to the following courts. In state of Nebraska, Supreme Courts, Court of Appeals, District Courts, County Courts, and Juvenile Courts. The word judge, when used in the rules, shall mean any judge of any court to which the rules apply. Then again, there are times when the rules don't apply. Or other officers who it or other officer who is authorized by statute to hold any hearing to which the rules apply. Number two, the rules apply generally to a civil and criminal proceeding, including contempt proceedings, except those in which the judge may act summarily. Their, judges, their judge is claimant, judge, jury, and executioner. Number three, the rule with respect to privilege ap apply at all stages of all action, cases, and proceedings. Number four, the rules other than those uh, with respect to privileges do not apply in the following situations. B, proceedings for extradition or rendition, preliminary uh, examinations or hearings in criminal cases, sentencing, granting or revoking probation, or imposing custodial sanctions, issuance of warrants for arrest, criminal summonses, and search warrants, and proceedings with respect to release on bail or otherwise. So all their defense attorneys cannot defeat the one lowly prosecutor in any city anywhere. Gee, I wonder why. If the rules of evidence don't apply during a uh, criminal preliminary examination, they are telling us we are there too. Wait the evidence to determine criminality. How then can one make a, any reasonable determination? How do these people sleep at night? I can show you so many contradictions in their encoded crap. I can also show you where, at least here, they offer you remedies outside of their code so they are not caught denying one justice, forward slash equity. For instance, https, full colon, forward slash, forward slash, nebraskalegislator.gov, forward slash laws, forward slash statutes, period, php, question mark, statute, equal sign, 25-2224. 25 24 cases not provided for in this code procedure if a case ever arises in which an action for the enforcement or protection of a right or the redress of uh, pres uh, prevention of a wrong cannot be had under this code the practice heretofore in use may be adopted so far as may be necessary to prevent a failure of justice. In the beginning of our Civil Procedure Code, Statute, Chapter 25, it says writs of prohibition are something like rendered obsolete by this code. When you get to this section within their code, in its annotation, it says writs of prohibition are allowed under this section. I've used this one on them a number of times before. They quit trying to make issue out of things they have no dominion over. The next one is even better. I've been using the above mentioned code for some time, as I've just said, and I never read the next one until a friend asked me something about the one mentioned here, and while chatting, I was uh, pursuing the other section. They have a handy link between previous and next section while on this section. HTTPS full colon forward slash forward slash Nebraska legislator dot gov forward slash laws forward slash statutes period PHP question mark statute equal sign 25 dash 2225. 25 dash 2225 special statutory proceedings procedures how affected by this code, whereby general or special statute, a civil action, legal or equitable, is given and the mode of proce uh, proceeding therein is prescribed. This code shall not affect the proceedings 
Under such statutes, until the legislator shall otherwise provide, but in all such cases, as far as it may be consistent with the statute giving such action, a pr practicable under and practicable under this code, the proceedings shall be conducted in conformity thereto, where the statute designates by name or otherwise the kind of action, but does not prescribe the mode of proceeding therein. Such action shall be commenced and prosecuted in conformity to this code, where the statute gives an action but does not designate the kind of action or prescribe the mode of proceedings therein, such action shall be held to be a civil action of this code and proceeded in accordingly. In other words, we can digest if you are bringing a claim and you are defining how it is to be handled or processed and that handling or processing doesn't interfere with due process of law, they are not supposed to mess with it by blending in their statutory realm, tainting your claim. They are commingling jurisdictions with those attempts to do so. That's a serious no-no at law. A total failure of justice is the side effects of commingling jurisdictions, that being like competing governments vying for the same city of neighborhood. What a mess that would create. I hope this finds you well and in good spirits. And this comes from our brother James, who has fought this system for over 40 years, particularly the state of Nebraska. And I'll give you a little background on this man. He once walked into court. He's never been represented by an attorney a day in his life. And he beats him on all fronts. And uh, what is interesting about James is at one point he was uh, fighting a bank over 160,000 permissible units, let's call it, because nobody can define how they wanted to be paid. He was there to provide remedy. Nobody could tell him what species? Dollars of what? Because they wanted him to presume and assume like an idiot what they wanted. But he needed them to be specific. I'm here to provide remedy. I need specific detail. Well, if they give specifics, then that comes a whole nother litany of questions. But what was interesting about this court case that he was in that day where there were eight well-dressed suited up men and women that came to watch little James in the court. And he's got an uncanny ability to multitask, all right? And while he's engaged in dialect from the alleged judge to the prosecutor, he hears these people behind him go, that's him. And the other man leans into the other one and goes, that's the genius we're here to watch? And he goes, that's him. That's the guy. And the guy goes, he doesn't look like a genius. And the other man said, sit down, shut up, and pay attention. Watch him. He knows what he's doing. Watch him. That's powerful, people. When, when you have piqued the interest of the alleged powers that be or the Bar Association for the state of Nebraska... To the point where they send six to eight people to come watch you in action in a court. That's impressive. So uh, my hat's off to you, brother. Thank you for uh, sharing this bit of knowledge with all of us. And uh, I know you don't have Facebook. I really appreciate it. Um, and thank you for sharing with us.